Boom, we are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's your boy, Nolan Hawkeye Anthony here, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic week, of course, wherever you may be and however you may be listening. I've got a jam-packed show for you guys today. We have the game preview for Iowa versus Nebraska. It's hard to believe, but we are indeed in the final regular season week of the Iowa Hawkeye 2021 football season. Of course, there is the bowl game that Iowa will be going to, and hopefully the Big Ten Championship, which I will get into, showing the how Iowa, the road, the path towards Iowa getting uh, to the Big Ten Championship and what bowl games are possible. I'll be showing some pro football focus grades as well. But before we get into any of that, I want to mention going to 247 hawkeye.com and i hope you guys consider hitting that subscribe button it really means a lot when you guys do that but if you don't think i've earned your sub at the very least like comment i try and get to all the comments i read pretty much pretty much all the comments uh so i hope you guys do that and be sure to check in for the post and the pregame show every saturday and i will be putting the paypal link in the description if you want to help out the channel and without further ado let's get into this I saw this on Twitter, so I wanted to read this to you guys, especially since Iowa will be playing Nebraska, and I will be showing you guys the last, I believe, five games uh, between Iowa and Nebraska. But here is the tweet. Kirk Ferentz was named Iowa's head coach in 1999, and since then, the number of different head coaches at these programs are as following. Texas, four. Nebraska, six. USC 8, LSU 5, Florida 10, Florida State 5, and Miami 8. By the way, Iowa has more wins this season, 9, than all 7 of those quote-unquote blue blood programs. So definitely a little shout-out to IA Punt Returner. I don't know if he watches this content, but uh, that tweet was pretty spectacular, pretty spectacular, and I wanted to give it... Uh, a little read, and it's it's 100% the truth. I've said this many times. I'm somewhere in between a rock and a hard place on this because before, any time before this season, I have always been the guy pounding my fist, stating, by the way, if you're not following me on Twitter, follow me there at 247Hawkeye, stating that us Iowa fans need to be happy and grateful with what we've had. We have been an above-average football program for the past 40 years with a few seasons here and there, the rebuild at the beginning of Kirk Ferentz tenure and the last couple seasons of Hayden Fry and, you know, a here and there season that didn't go so, so great. This has been an above average football program where us Iowa fans can basically have realistic expectations for Iowa to compete for a big 10 championship or a big 10 championship game um, experience or game, or appearance, whatever word you want to use. And the biggest storyline, in my opinion, there's two massive storylines going into this game uh, between Iowa and Nebraska. It is the possibility of a second in three years, 10-win season for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and a trip to the Big Ten championship game. So we will definitely be driving into that more in a moment. So here it is, guys. Here is the Heroes game, uh, an awesome rivalry that before the Big Ten started, or excuse me, before Nebraska got into the Big Ten, this was not really a rivalry, but a game where Iowa fans definitely like to beat Nebraska and Nebraska definitely like to beat Iowa as they are neighboring uh, states. We look here, the first meeting was in 1891. Uh, and I'm going, Nebraska leads the series 29, 29 to 19 with three ties um, in the all-time series. In trophy, it, it, as for the game being a trophy game, Iowa leads seven to three. And let's take a look at the last five games. If you look, I Kirk Ferentz and Iowa definitely struggled against Nebraska early on. Uh, and... But since Scott Frost, and I'm blanking on the coach who took over before 
uh, Scott Frost. But basically, since the 2015 season, Iowa has absolutely dominated this series. Uh, absolutely dominated. Here it is. The You guys can see here, Nebraska won one, two, three, four, five games in a row against Iowa. That was absolutely brutal. But since 2013... Iowa has won one, two, well, let's just count how many games they've won in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six games in a row. And they have won seven of the last eight games between Iowa and Nebraska. That is incredible. You guys can see the scores here um, starting in 2013, Iowa 38, Nebraska 17, Nebraska 37, Iowa 34, uh, Iowa 28, Nebraska 20, Iowa 40, Nebraska 10, Iowa 56, Nebraska 14. You get the picture. And as an Iowa fan, I have to be honest, one of the major things that have absolutely dictated the outcome of this game has been the attention to detail. The focus of all the phases of football by Kirk Ferentz and his squad uh, especially the special teams. The bottom line with Iowa is they have an elite defense and an elite special teams, all phases, punt return, kick return, kickoff, uh, 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 kicking field goals. They are all good there, and it definitely has helped them the past th four or five seasons uh, against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. So I'm going to be doing a little bit something different here between – it, or within the video, I'm going to be looking at the matchup predictor uh, and then showing the pro football focus grades here in a moment. By the way, I fully expect Nebraska fans to watch this video. I fully expect them to comment uh, in the video uh, saying that I am not being totally partial, which is probably true. I am a full-blown Iowa fan, but I will try and provide equal stat comparisons. Uh, we look at the quarterback position. Adrian Martinez has had a decent season, but Adrian Martinez is basically the same quarterback that he was when he's a freshman. He is an electric runner of the football. He can basically make any throw, but a lot of times his decision-making, especially in a conference as dominated by defense as the Big Ten is, he gets Nebraska into trouble. We saw that last week against Wisconsin, where us Iowa fans were hoping for the first time in forever that Nebraska could do something positive for us to help us out just a little bit, just a little bit, and it didn't happen. Adrian Martinez, I believe, had two interceptions in that game, and that's basically Adrian Martinez's M.O. The guy just turns the ball over far too often uh, for in a conference where the defenses are so good. Either way, he has 14 touchdown passes, 14 tubs compared to 10 INTs. Obviously, Spencer Petras is likely to not be the starter for the Iowa Hawkeyes. If you're a Nebraska fan and you're watching this, Iowa has switched the starting quarterbacks. Uh, Spencer Petras was the starter at the beginning of the season and largely helped out in the very strong start for the Iowa Hawkeyes. But they lost two straight, and now Iowa has Alex Padilla in there, and I will show his stats real quick. Here are Alex Padilla's stats, and the stats aren't much better. They really are not much better than Spencer Petrus's. However, and in my opinion, my assessment of Alex Padilla is very simple, and it's this. Alex Padilla is a decent thrower of the football uh, there was a pass he made, I believe, against Northwestern that was absolutely beautiful. The ball was dropped, which is something that both quarterbacks have, or excuse me, both quarterbacks have had to deal with when starting. They have had to deal with too many dropped passes from the Iowa wide receivers. And that is something that derails drives, uh, just stops it right in its tracks. The stats are what they are. He is 39 of 83 for 47%, 522 yards, two tubs, and one INT. In the game prior against uh, Minnesota, Alex Padilla had a pretty good game. However, there were multiple passes that could have been intercepted. So my assessment of him is very simple. He 
can make intermediate throws. He has nice touch when it comes to deep passes. In my opinion, the any ounce of what the Iowa offense has done that has been better has more to do with the run game, the offensive line getting better, and the changes on the outside, the perimeter in the wide receivers than the quarterback switch ever has. Alex Padilla, however, does provide an element that Spencer Petras simply does not. And that is an ability to extend plays with his with his legs and really help out the offensive line when there are some mishaps. And that definitely helps. And occasionally, Alex Padilla can get some yardage, some yak, some yak after, uh, you know, in the run game, which in my opinion, he needs to do a little bit more, just a little bit more, not too much, just a little bit, because it is certainly something that he is capable of. It looks like Tyler Goodson is going to have a thousand yard uh, rushing season, which is, it's awesome. I'm very happy about that. His mother is a very sweet woman. Uh, his father, it's a, it's an awesome family, just a great family. Tyler Goodson has been a great human being in the Iowa Hawkeye program. So it's awesome to see him get a thousand yards. I would like him to hit the hole much faster sometimes, but it is what it is. He still almost has a thousand yards rushing and he has six TDs on the season. And in a season where Iowa's offensive line has been not as good as we have come to expect the Iowa offensive line, Tyler Goodson's yards are actually pretty good uh, and something to be commended. Adrian Martinez is the leading rusher for Nebraska with 525 yards and 13 tubs on the ground. That's certainly something to keep an eye on. Sam Laporta is still Iowa's leading receiver. The tight end from Illinois is still the leading receiver with 425 yards and two tubs. I actually thought he was going to be way, way more explosive this year, but we just haven't necessarily seen it. And S. Tuar or Tor has uh, 831 yards and five tubs on the season. ESPN's power index gives Nebraska a 57.7% chance to win this game. And I got to say, I'm kind of surprised by that. Uh, more than kind of surprised by that, especially for a team that has only won three games. Here are the spreads for the game. Nebraska is a three and a half point favorite. I totally expect that to come down. They'll probably be a point and a half, two and a half point favorites, uh, or excuse me, a point and a half, two point favorites by the time kickoff happens. And the over and under is 44 in a half. Uh, and here are the team stats. Nebraska averages 28.5 points per game. Iowa averages 25 and a half. Iowa gives up 16.9 points per game, whereas Nebraska gives up 22.2. And these are, you guys can freeze that and look at the side-by-side -side comparison of the stats there if you want to. And here are the last five games. Everybody's been saying that Nebraska is secretly a good team. And they've been in every ball game. But as a former Division I water polo player, I got to tell you guys, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. At the end of the day, what matters is your record. The only thing, the only time that it matters to have a be close in games is within your program when you are trying to fully accurately see or detail your season. But when it comes to analysis or anything like that, in my opinion, it means very little. Wisconsin uh, beat Nebraska 35-28. Ohio State beat them 26-17. to Purdue beat them 28-23. to Minnesota beat them 30-23. to And Michigan beat them 32 -23 to 29 and here you guys can see the last five Iowa games Iowa with after suffering those two losses back to back which might come back to bite them in coming up short for the Big Ten championship has rattled off three straight victories and are trying to make it four in a row all right let's take a look at the pro football focus grades by the way I'm not going to show all the pro football focus grades of each position on each team okay it would take far too long so what I think I'm going to do is show three positions on offense and three positions on defense so here is Nebraska Adrian Martinez is the 84th 
best quarterback in the country with a grade of a 76.2. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's take a look at Iowa here. Spencer Petras is still in limbo at number 87. And Alex Padilla is 140 with a grade of 69.3, which again, doesn't really surprise me. Alex Padilla has, for the most part, in my opinion, been average. But his average and the things that he excels at helps this Iowa team, at least in the short term, better than Spencer Petras, in my opinion. Next up, we have the running back position. And one thing that definitely excites me is the emergence or inclusion of Gavin Williams, a bigger, thicker running back with some power. I think it definitely helped out Tyler Goodson with Gavin Williams going in there and delivering the pop, as they say, uh, making the defenders more honest with their tackling. Tyler Goodson is more of a finesse running back. He is capable of lowering his shoulder, dipping his shoulder, and getting some. But uh, it definitely helps if there's another running back who can take the bulk of that load. And Gavin Williams has a nice grade of a 74.2. Tyler Goodson is still pretty low down at number 194, but still has a grade of 72.2. Here are Nebraska's running backs. I'm not sure. I have the uh, minimum snap count off so all these players are players who maybe haven't played a ton of snaps but have played nonetheless and i gotta tell you wow have there been a ton of running backs who have gotten the carry for nebraska it's pretty shocking really but it looks like R ramir johnson is the only running back who is over the minimum snap count to actually be considered in the rankings and he is ranked number 291 with a grade of 66.3. Next up, we have the wideouts, the wideouts. And I do think I'll probably go over the three position uh, limit I gave myself for offense and defense. I think I'm going to show tight ends and one of the offensive line positions. But here are the grades for the Iowa wide receivers. And it's pretty accurate. Arlen Bruce, in my opinion, has been the best wide receiver Iowa has had. He helps out in the run game, and he is a solid wide receiver. He has been solid, especially for being a freshman, the former four-star, and fellow former four-star out of the state of Nebraska, a, uh, a legacy recruit, as they say, Keegan Johnson, who spurned Nebraska and chose the Iowa Hawkeyes has a grade of a 65.8. It's probably going to be incredible uh, visiting Nebraska on the road, especially as a freshman uh, and playing his father's former team. Here are Nebraska's uh, grades, and they have former Iowa Hawkeye and Michigan Wolverine Oliver Martin, which is pretty cool. He has a grade of a 66. Uh, as I stated, Samari Toro or Tory has uh, the most yards receiving. He has a grade of a 79, pretty high up, pretty high up. Uh, and Omar Manning, Xavier Betts, Levi Falk, and Wyatt Luer are other guys who have enough snaps to be over the minimum snap count. Uh, it is interesting to note, going back to Iowa, Tyrone Tracy really didn't see very many snaps last week, and I don't think he will. I think the wide receivers Iowa will be going with will be Arlen Bruce, Keegan Johnson, Charlie Jones, and Nico Reganey. And again, those guys have been the most productive for Iowa. Uh, at various points in the season, they have all made very big plays. And unfortunately, Tyrone Tracy just has not. So I don't think we will see that change unless there's an injury or something to that effect. Next up, we have the tight end position. Sam Laporta is holding steady at about 78. Luke Lachey is number 238, not doing as well as I expected. Uh, he's still going through some growing pains. Hopefully, we see that relatively soon. Uh, and here are the Nebraska tight ends. Austin Allen uh, and Travis 
uh, Vokalek, who Iowa definitely tried to uh, recruit from Rutgers. I believe that's where he came from. Uh, both are graded pr- decently high at the tight end position. Austin Allen is easily considered one of the best tight ends in the country, according to Pro Football Focus. The last position we'll be looking at on offense will be the center position. Nebraska's Cam Jurgens is number 51. And of course, big fella Tyler Linderbaum is still far and away considered the top center in the country, which isn't really surprising. He has dominated every single game. He is spectacular. So I definitely hope that continues. Next up is now we are on the defense. We have the corners and Iowa will be without Matt Hankins, who has had a superb season, uh, especially taking the football away. I'll turn off the minimum snap count. It'll be very interesting to see what Iowa does with true freshman Cooper Dijon. Uh, He has played the minimum four games, so we will see what they decide to do with him. He played corner and not his high school safety position, Uh, so we will see. Jamari Harris is probably the guy to slot in there for Matt Hankins, unless Terry Roberts, who has been missing due to injury, is back. Hope, I'm hoping he will be back. I definitely think that will help Iowa out immensely. Riley Moss is still holding steady at number 12. And looking at Nebraska, JoJo Demon is an excellent corner, number nine in the country. And Cam Taylor Britt is also pretty good as well. And now we have the linebacker position. Jack Campbell is the best considered by pro football focus to be the best linebacker for Iowa. Seth Benson, Justin Jacobs has really dropped down. He was highly graded at the beginning of the season, but he has gone down a lot. Uh, So it'll be, it looks like his problem has been coverage, which that really is what his position is asked to do is, is coverage, especially his role as an outside linebacker for the Iowa Hawkeyes. That's why he is in there. So hopefully he can improve upon that uh, and improve his grade. And here are Nebraska's linebackers. Nick Heinrich, I believe, is a freshman or or sophomore. Very young is number 516. And Luke Reimer is number 312 for Nebraska. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the pro football focus grades. I don't want to show all of them just because, like I said, it would take far too long. Uh, and I want to get in and out of here for you guys. Here is the bottom line for this game. As long as Iowa goes into Nebraska and plays relatively clean football and starts faster than what we have seen really the past four games. If we look at the games against Illinois, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Purdue, Iowa started really slow really slow, which isn't like them. I don't know if that is something in their training or preparation, but it takes them a little while to get going. Maybe it's the lack of an, uh, you know, an offensive score, the first possession. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, but they have started slow. They were neck and neck with Minnesota, neck and neck with Illinois. They were trailing Illinois 10 to zero. Obviously the game flip-flopped immensely as outside of the last touchdown when they in garbage time against Illinois, Iowa would have won that game 33 to, I think, 16. Uh, absolutely demolishing Illinois. So that will be something Iowa needs to do. They need to come out strong and they need to come out fast. At the very least, they can't allow Nebraska to come out fast like they did against Wisconsin. As long as Iowa goes in to Lincoln and plays clean football and maybe we see something from Alex Padilla, a little bit more sharpness, a little less dropped passes from the Iowa wide receivers. But again, this Iowa offense has always been and will always be predicated on the run game. As long as the run game is in place, clean football is played and the defense showing up to the level that they are absolutely capable of playing. Iowa should be able to leave Lincoln with their 10th win of the season. Obviously it's a little bit concerning playing a quarterback like Adrian Martinez, but again, the reason Nebraska has not done good, especially the past four years against a team like Iowa is because Iowa doesn't beat themselves. And when you have a quarterback like Adrian Martinez, who finds ways to basically 
give the other team momentum, it is problematic. I remember having players like that on my collegiate water polo team. It is, prob- like I said, it's problematic. Again, you put up with that because everything else is so good. They're, they make so many plays. But that, that coupled with Iowa being an excellent team in taking the football away from the opposing team, I'm not sure is a recipe for success for Nebraska. The other thing, and I'm not sure everybody else is going to put a ton of uh, fire on this or stock into this, but Nebraska's team is kind of in turmoil. What Nebraska team are we going to see? Are we going to see a team that is basically out of it because the season is virtually over? Uh, are we going? Nebraska will not be going bowl game or bowling. Excuse me. Uh, they they have parted ways with multiple coaches from their coaching staff. Are they basically going to pack it in and look forward to next season or? Are they going to throw the entire kitchen sink at Iowa in an attempt to get a top 25 win and some momentum going into the offseason? I don't know. I do think it's more likely the kitchen sink as this will be a game, a senior. I believe this will be a uh, senior or the, the game for the seniors and it will be at home. So I do think it is more going to be the kitchen sink. Uh, and it's been several games since Nebraska has beaten Iowa. With that being said, Iowa is the better football team. They have had the better season. I am taking the Iowa Hawkeyes to win this game 28 to 19. I think the Iowa Hawkeyes go into Lincoln. They get takeaways. They play clean football and they get it done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this, especially you Nebraska fans. I I hope you guys don't kill me too much in the comments, but if you do, I'll be able to take it. It'll be all right. I hope you guys do consider hitting that subscribe button. I hope you feel I've earned that from you. But if you don't, at the very least, like, comment. I try to get to all the comments. I really do. And that's why I started this channel to interact with fellow college football fans, especially Iowa fans. Be sure to turn in for the post game or tune in for the post game and the pregame show uh i do every saturday i'll i will be putting the paypal link in the description if you want to help out the channel and last but not least go to 247hawkeye.com and remember dbap don't be a pussy willow and facts are feelings because things don't matter love y'all go hawks bye